episode of Turn Up the Mic. I'm Chris. To my right, I got Roy. Hey, what's up, man? First episode of the year. I'd like to welcome y'all back to another year of greatness. Man, you, you're getting that chill <laughs> vibe. Like, I was like, okay, like <laughs> working on my radio voice. It was like, we're on NPR right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, ooh, I like yes. this. <laughs> How are you doing today, Roy? Good, man. I haven't worked in like a almost two weeks had a little vacation yeah so. i saw a post it was like it's been saturday for like five days now <laughs> it is man like, yeah that's pretty close what a great year we're starting off at the first yeah. of the year started off on a friday like that's great like it's already looking up for us and uh we got vaccines on the way um trend number two slow <laughs> zombies are coming like it's a lot of stuff to look forward to so i think this year is going to be pretty good or I'm hoping for for a it's good, gonna turn good because 2020 didn't leave right away. I mean, nah, it was like <laughs> ah, gut punch, yeah. goodbye. We got the, the leftovers. Yeah, we got it. We got to clear that out. Yeah. So anyway, before we get started, wanted to say rest in peace to MF Doom. I know yeah. that was your 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 guy. Yep. Listen to a lot of his music. You talked about him more than anybody that I know. Yeah, he's uh, he's I don't know how to explain. Like he's just he's really good. He's good music. He's consistent. Uh, he. Every time he dropped an album, he it was great. Even his newer stuff, it was great. Um, he he stayed in his I don't want to say lane, but like his style. Yeah. Like he he never tried to change it up because I think he's a definition of underground. Yeah, underground, but like a known underground artist. Does that make sense? Like yeah. everyone knows him. A lot of people be like, "Oh, I've heard of him, but I don't know his music." Yeah. So like he's well known, but his music, like he he does have a cult following. Um, but yeah, man, like 49 years old, that, that, that sucks. Did you say, sad. did you say he died recently or they, he died he, a while back? He died Halloween day. Oh, wow. okay. It was recently announced. Yeah. It just, it was announced December 31st. That's crazy. That's, and that's, and that shows you also how he lived his life as in, he was never one for the public eye yeah. for somebody. There's not many celebrities that can be gone two months and no one's like no so like he really he really lived a prior life you know because he's known for that mask never taking off the mask yeah there's been theories all around that he's not even doing concerts it's somebody else <laughs> have so. you seen him without the mask um yeah okay. but but you but i had to google it really like google go- i had to google his name not mf doom like, okay i googled his name and then like and then you see it but they're like older pictures and stuff yeah um so I think at one point I was reading up on him and they were saying the reason he wears the mask is because he was like a fan of like superheroes and stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. How many different masks did he have? Because I know he had a gold one. Was it like a bronze or gray one, too? Yeah. He he exchanged them out a lot. No, no. Like that silver one was like his like the one he I remember him the most in. Yeah. Um, Just because with like Mad Lib and up, that's that um, album cover that you recognize Mm -hmm. like for me at least um so and it's you know it was i don't know if it was surprising but but it was like pretty cool to see all these artists actually doing like tribute freestyles and stuff like people's like killer mike did one a little bit fiasco did one most def did one and it was it was interesting i'm like man those are all artists i follow yeah so it just kind of goes hand in hand to you know what i listen to yeah that's dope um i know we were talking about some of his music I never really got into it, not because I didn't like his music. It just, I guess, I never had time. You you had to look him up. He yeah. wasn't one that's gonna be on the front page of a new album drop. No radio play. No not like you. You had to look him up, hear about it, and physically search for the album. Yeah. And then some of the music, like the song we came into, it had the '90s vibe to it. You said yeah. it was like from that era when the yeah, album. Yeah, that album too. was from '99. So. Yeah. Um, but and he kept he kept that style. So yeah. Uh, Give him, give him a listen, give him a spin, and uh, he, you're you're gonna like some bars that he gives you. Yeah, all I've heard was he's very lyrical when yeah. it comes to rapping, mm-hmm. and that's cool. So yeah, I'll probably check some out to see what I think. But from what I heard, based on the intro, I definitely like that vibe of it. It's like a old school New York vibe. Yeah, which is cool. But yeah, R.I.P. M.F. Doom. And then um. I know we we didn't record for like three weeks, right? We took the whole month off or something. It was two weeks. Yeah, felt like forever. It did feel like forever. I I think 
it felt even longer because throughout those two weeks I didn't work. Yeah. So it was like even <laughs> longer because like work didn't keep me busy. And then here, like it was on a, fr- and even I think you got confused because was it last Friday, or the Friday before? 26. On the 26th, yeah. you know, the Friday before you even sent me a list. Yeah. I'm like, what's it? I'm like, that's cool, bro. But we ain't recording. <laughs> I was just in work mode. But yeah, I, I wanted to bring it up, but I forgot. Well, we weren't able to record Taylor Swift. Like, I have it's still relevant. I it got to be. I think there's there's some type of conspiracy theory going on with her because I forgot what week it was. She took over Apple Music. Like the whole front page was Taylor Swift. Yep. I don't understand what that is. It's like they're really boosting her numbers at this point. Now, I, I you showed me screenshots and I saw yeah, it. it was the now, whole front page. Now that's one thing that I like about Spotify. Mm-hmm. Your home page is your home page. Like Spotify does not throw ads at me like that. It's not normally like that either. Is it? Because no, I've yeah. I've never seen that. Like on Spotify, I've never seen that. And like it didn't. I, don't, I guess it's an ad, but it was literally all her her catalog. So See, like, what do you, do you like count if, that as her ad? Or threw that at me, I would have been like, "What? The, what is it's broken?" Yeah, because like, usually I like Apple's front page. Even though I have an Android, I don't have an iPhone. I don't have an iPhone from nobody. To, don't get it confused. But <laughs> better make that clear. <laughs> yeah, I like the app because it shows you like different genres you can browse through, like mm-hmm. new music that's dropped, um, your playlist or whatever. But it was all Taylor Swift. I, I don't understand how that could happen. But promotion, man. Yeah, and, and then you were saying she was like at the mall too, like her ads and stuff. Um, yeah, I was at Target. Her picture was everywhere. It was like um, the one with the ponytail. It was the was it ex, um, exclusive CD sold at Target. I had to see a, a live pop up of hers. Like damn, like yeah. turned the corner and she was there. I don't know what's going was, on. And then I even got a notification from Disney Plus. She has like um, a, a uh, what's her? I'm called folklore or something. Yeah, something like it that. It was like a folklore behind the scenes album making. Yeah, and Disney Plus is like stream the doc now and listen to the album. I was like. <laughs> Bro, it's weird because she only does one thing. If you think about it, like that, I know of she only does music. It's not like she's doing Justin Timberlake, like movies, like in yep. Elf or whatever, like cartoon movies where she does the, the voice for him. She only does music. So I don't know why they're pushing her this hard. But her like. Her stands, bro, like they're loyal because. As regardless of what we talk, you know, like I'm not saying I mean I'm not a fan of her music, but yeah, you can there's I don't know what artists can drop and have seven hundred thousand guaranteed streams. I don't know. Have like you I, ever met a Taylor Swift fan? Yeah. I've never met a Taylor I, Swift I've, fan. Oh not I've met them on Facebook because they're bots because <laughs> they're cause bots, as bro. As, as soon as they drop <laughs> not because I knew that I knew a couple of them like in person in high school, okay. and then now they're like stands and they're then, probably like, paid paid bro, sponsors like as soon as it drops i'm like but and i'm like man i can't say shit because when my favorite art when my favorite artist drops i listen yeah like, that's just weird to me though i don't know something's up with her i think is, they're man. pushing her too and, hard right now and then i sent you a screenshot of her because i was like um because i went to her uh merch site yeah because i wanted to check something because i were talking how a lot of these streams now it doesn't even have to be a stream. A lot of artists, what they're doing is you buy a shirt, it includes the digital album. Yeah. And all the artist has to do is change, like, say the shirt's $24.99. They they charge you for in their records, the shirt's $24.49, and they're charging you 49 cents for the digital album. Okay. And it's it counts as a as a pure sale because someone's buying the album. So does she make 49 cents worth of album sale? Mm-hmm. So it's just basically the yeah. number of albums she but, sold but that for she's looking her, for. But for her, it's I don't think it's about that because she's getting the stream off platforms. Yeah, it counts as a pure sell, okay. so it goes towards like pure sales. Because when it when it does a pure sell, it doesn't count as a as a stream, because someone can buy an album and never listen to it. They can keep it wrapped up. Right, that's a pure sell. So that's what I think they're doing. And then, but I saw on her website. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. She was selling singles. Who's does that? For sixty nine cents. Who does? I was like, is this Apple <laughs> Music like ten years ago? Like. <laughs> Yeah, man. Do you know anyone who's bought a single in the last like I don't know how many years? I wonder where does it go? Is it just a, a <laughs> file, an MP3? MP3? <laughs> What's supposed to do with this? You send you a flash drive. 
yeah, this the um the page, the merch page is definitely not uh geared towards me. <laughs> this, <laughs> she got candles, she got an old picture it, it, of herself really, on it here. It really does look like she she copied just um, Tim Lake Man of the Woods yeah, exactly definitely. When it came to that. But you know the Taylor stands are gonna say nah, like she did it first. Literally, not she's, really. But she's in the woods, like yeah. in the same shirt that Justin Timberlake had borrowed the flannel. Yeah, this ain't for me. Yeah, the prices are good though. She got forty dollars sweaters, thirty dollars mm-hmm. tees. These affordable fifteen dollars socks. It says tolerated. Okay, tolerated. <laughs> that's but I was, I started cracking up at the singles, bro. Like who's bought singles? Yeah, that's wild. But yeah, I got my eyes on Taylor Swift. I think there's a story here, but. I might just be ahead of the game. Like, I know who said that. I know it happened with 6 9 and YouTube that there was a certain percentage of promotion that it made done or something. It made sense, though. He had paid like, um, so let's say he did 60 million in YouTube views, but like 20 million went for like advertising. He he paid for that video to get viewed, but he's banned from everywhere else. So how else is he (laughs) supposed to promo? But it was still crazy because even without his advertising, or if you take that out, the regular views was still like more than most people. You know, oh, yeah. it was still pretty up there. So, but yeah, she definitely is everywhere, and it's funny because I thought I saw more on the what is this B side folklore, whatever the hell it was, yeah. than the regular one. Yeah, it definitely did resurface. But yeah, stay uh, stay tuned on that story. I'm yeah. still developing it. Happens we don't own your masters. Yeah, it thing got passed around. <laughs> like, yeah, and I see how we feel. <laughs> anyway, um, and then we got the game. He said the only person he would do a versus with would be 50 Cent. Would you want to see that? The game and 50 Cent? Doing a versus battle, yeah. Yeah. I would. Well, first of all, <clears throat> I don't think I'll ever deny 50 Cent. Uh, a versus it's because this dude talks a lot. He, I think, leading up to the verses, he's gonna have some memes in the pocket of posts. Like, yeah, it's gonna be entertaining. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see the game because then that steals us from the one that we really want to see, the Ja Rule one. Would you want game versus fifty or Ja Rule versus fifty? Ja Rule, exactly. So I'm thinking you can't go back. I know um, Rick Ross is like, yeah, I want to do another versus battle, but we don't want to hear your catalog again. Right. You only get one shot at this. Yeah. So I'll definitely go 50 Cent versus Jaro. I, I just I would like from an entertainment standpoint, I think um 50 Cent would be entertaining any. Yeah. Because he he's you know he's gonna post shit. He's gonna just yeah. lead up to it. And they're not even mad at each other anymore. And it was just for me, it felt like it was more of a musical beef mm-hmm. than like ah, I killed you or I tried <laughs> to take your life type beef, you know? Yeah, he ain't Gucci. <laughs> no, absolutely not. So I think the Jaw Roll one would definitely be more entertaining. I, t- I think I told Johnny, um, the owner of Term to Trouble, uh, I told him that 50 Cent and Ja Rule is the East Coast Gucci Man and Jeezy. Yeah. That's basically what we're looking at with them two. And yeah, I definitely go with that over, over the game. Who do you think will win between him and the game if they were to do a versus? 50. Mm. But I don't think it would be close. I mean, I don't think it would be uh, like he would win by much. I think I'm going to go with the game. I think I thought you meant Jaro and him. No, nah, between um, if I go Jaro and Fifty, I definitely mm-hmm. ah, that's hard too. Jaro has, I think Jaro has yeah. more range. It's funny because Jaro, at least for me, Jaro is one of those people that you got to think about. You're like, oh shit, I forgot he had that song. I yeah, forgot he had that song. But Jaro don't <laughs> have a lot of like gangster yeah. albums compared to Fifty no. Cent. It, it's going to be almost like Jaro and Ashanti versus Fifty, right? Because <laughs> that's basically what they did. Or Ja Rule and J Lo <laughs> versus, versus Fifty, like yeah. he he definitely went down the the singer lane at like he, halfway he, through his career. He went down that collab lane, like yeah, that's what kept them afloat for a minute. Dang, so I don't know. That's a good versus, actually. No, I think Fifty win, but it's gonna be like yeah. What do they do now? Twenty two, twenty four. Yeah, I think Fifty win by two songs, two rounds. Dang, but does Fifty sit? Because when the way that I base my versus battles is. Kind of like the reason why I said Gucci won was because he has the catalog, obviously, and he also has the range of songs. He could play gangster music. He could play radio hits. He could play trap songs. He could play mixtapes. You know what I'm saying? I don't look at it like that. I, I look at the literal sense of the way you should do it is round for round. 
Yeah. That's the way you should do it round for round. Who won X round and then at the end? Because that also plays into the role as in did they do a good job at setting up what they're going to play? Yeah. I'm going to go 50 Cent versus Ja Rule. I'm going to go 50 Cent because I think yeah. Ja Rule is a little more love heavy. 50 Cent has some songs he can play against those songs. Now, and now, he has gangster but songs. If Ashanti pops out physically, he wins. That's cheating, he wins. though. You can't bring <laughs> out. Wins. You can't bring out like, guests. Like he wins. Like, like that's it's, cheating. It's a win. So a win. the game versus Fifty. Who would you go with? Um, the game. Yeah. Dang. I would go with the game too. I think the game is Fifty Cent 2.0. He's a little better than he's, Fifty. So yeah, and he's one of the only people better. to survive a Fifty Cent beef. Him and yeah. Rick Ross have lived to tell I mean, the tale. Fifty, I mean, uh, when you the game's one of those people that, like, when you see his interview stuff, you just feel like you don't fuck with him. Like, yeah, he's very, um, yeah, yeah, he's very. I want, I want to say the word, but he has like a, like a, like, I don't know, like, like this. He's very sure of himself. Yeah, yeah, and he loves the beef. So <laughs> yeah, he's just like fifty cents. So he's like a fifty two point to me. He's like a fifty West. <laughs> so yeah, I'll go the game. And when it comes to the game, he said the only artist that has more number ones than him is Drake. I didn't know the game had that many number ones. I I hope he meant not in a literal sense, but just like I got hits. Like like I like <laughs> I got bangers. Like I'm not talking about billboard bangers. I'm just talking yeah. about bangers. Like does he have more bangers than French Montana? Man, but French can be like DJ Khaled. He just hops on for a verse and it's a yeah. hit. Like, French does one verse and pay for the rest. <laughs> bro, like like it's a hit. Like like nobody loves French's verse on his own song. Yeah, but he's like he gets he does what we want. Not I don't even know if we want DJ Khaled to do that. Yeah, he does he's, he raps he's, on the song. But he's like DJ Khaled with the verse. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. Like, but he got some hits. I mean French low key can go, can do a versus. Nobody wants to hear his his part though. That doesn't matter, man. Nobody remembers French Montana's verses they though. They don't. <laughs> like he's <laughs> he's playing everybody's feature his whole. That, that's gonna be a DJ versus battle. <laughs> so would you? All right. So yeah. Anyway, I go game. So yeah. French Montana versus DJ Khaled. Who wins? Oh, that, um, that's a dope versus. Damn, that is a dope versus. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go with DJ Khaled though. Like. Like DJ Khaled got some, but that's cheating, bro. He that's, has way more whole but, verses. But that's cheating. It's like he got Beyonce. Like you have to make a rule. Like at least, at least the song he has to say another one or always or win. Like because he has some songs he don't even say that on it. Yeah. Like if we being honest, I mean it's pretty comparable. I'm gonna bring this up in the group if they approve my post. Like if we're bringing honest, man, they got everybody, straight, bro. Everybody, yeah, like, everybody loves the features. On both sides, so yeah. dang. But I'm gonna go DJ is Khaled. It, is it even fair for DJ Khaled to do a versus anyone unless it's another producer? I don't think it'll be fair if it's another producer because the producers don't really talk so as much as can, him. Who can DJ Khaled go against? French Montana. But at least, at least French Montana tries. Uh, I think, okay, so look the I way the, French is the, only the way the way it would work is all right. French, this is what they would tell French. Only hey, use your features. Hey, you can do any song you collabed on, produced, like DJ Khaled. But since DJ Khaled doesn't say shit, <laughs> you don't got to play your part. <laughs> That's what we want anyway. So, yeah. He'd be like, all right. All right. Bet. <laughs> all the way. Who got the best verse from Drake? DJ Khaled or French Montana? DJ Khaled. I mean, DJ Khaled, yeah. I don't know. I think DJ Khaled has more. Who had no shopping? No, that's that's a Chris Brown song. Yeah, ah, I don't know. I, I want to go French Montana. You gotta look that up, bro. I think French Montana you know, has you know, better. You you Drake know, versus. You know I don't got Drake songs in a holster like that. They both have done a lot of. <laughs> Drake has saved them <laughs> on both sides, so I don't know. I don't know who's who got whose songs. Drake's been giving that steamy pack for a while. Yeah, but I'm still waiting for mine. Yeah, I'm. I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go French Montana. French. Yeah, yeah without yeah. digging deep into it. I gotta it. look it up. But yeah, I'll, but but just just uh, just thinking about all the just gonna say Drake. I mean, I'm gonna say DJ Khaled. Yeah, but yeah. And then um, before we go into the new year, 
we want to finish the old year with our top 10 albums. <clears throat> who did who did you have? This was harder than I thought. All right, before you do your top 10, off the top of your dome. First do your 10 through 6. What? That don't make sense. Yeah, let's do do just do we I'm each do, do half and half and then we do the top I'm, five. I'm gonna do my whole 10. Yeah, I'm so gonna they lost know. by the 10th. People will get lost <clears throat> mixing it up. All right. So off the top of your head, what was three albums that were let down to you? Just off the top of your head. Little baby. Okay. Uh, Little baby or the baby? The baby. Okay. Because that one we clown. Like that one was bad. Okay. Um Russ. I didn't listen to Russ. Let down, yeah. Russ, and then the third one would be. It's hard. I gotta think about the third one. I'm gonna go Brandy. I'm gonna go. Ch- I, I, I didn't have the expectations for that. I thought it was gonna be good. I thought it was gonna be like a '90s vibe. So yeah, she definitely got biggest letdown. Um, I'm gonna go Childish Gambino. Uh, that, That's a good one. That one, yeah. And I'm agree. I'm agreeing with you not to agree with you because we both clowned that. Yeah, album. like we both. I don't know what that it. was. Um, and then the third, I don't, I don't even know. Why I said top three. I don't know. There wasn't any other ones that really stuck out to me. So top two was good, because those are the two that stuck out to me the most out of like most anticipated. And then I listened to it. And I'm like, what is this? This is bad. But yeah. So what's your top ten? Or for favorite albums this year, your best top ten. All right, and number ten, I got Bad Bunny. Yo hago lo que me de la gana. I got that number ten. I don't know what you said. Minor, <clears> I, do, no, I do. Minor, I want. My minor in no order. Um, that was the hardest part. Put them in order. So yeah, and then number it. nine, I got um, Machine Gun Kelly. Take us to my downfall. Machine Gun Kelly, bro. That that album got a lot of spins. Okay, and it was good. I. I I love the album. I see where we're going. Number eight. Oh, seven. No shake. I saw that. I kept going. <laughs> I didn't really put her on my top three. Disappointing because I didn't really expect anything. Yeah. So for, I, I think. Yeah, definitely top top number eight for me when it comes to album wise. And then because she was really it was conf- like conflicting where to put her. Because if I thought about solo production, she was usually top like three. Okay. But overall album number eight. Number seven. Hold on, I got it here. Um, Limbo. Um, anime is the name. Oh yeah. I forgot about that album. This was really good. Now, guys, did not listen to the deluxe. That was like a 180. Like it, it, I hated that. I don't deluxe. remember the deluxe. Dang, that's crazy. The, did, we, did we review it? No, because it okay. came out. Um, the deluxe was like if he was trying to be popular like it was like yeah i no, nah, i don't like it at all but yeah that one number six benny the butcher burden of proof okay number five freddie gibbs alfredo i didn't listen to that, nah, that was he's bad. like he just celebrated his 80th birthday right, alone <laughs> uh, <laughs> old man face <laughs> number four i got logic no pressure okay number three i got there's number three mac miller circles okay number two i got the weekend after hours huh and then number one, Bad Bunny. Yeah, he dropped like Mundo. eight albums last year. So two. That's crazy. Two. But that one, like, he dropped two or three? Two. Uh, he he dropped two in a mixtape. So, okay. It, it was literally called B side. Uh, Everybody did that last <clears> year too. Did you yeah. notice that? It was a lot of B side albums. But I was thinking, like, I was going back and forth between like The Weeknd and Bad Bunny, but like Bad Bunny's like album. There's not a lot of al- I can't count any album this year that had like. The rap, the trap, the rock, like yeah. it had it had so many sounds on it, and he blended it well. And it's just like, and like it still gave me like the the bad bunny I wanted to where like it just not sad, but it just makes you think and stuff, you know? Yeah. All right, so we had like I guess three or so in common. That's good. Mine. I didn't want a lot in common. Yeah. So the first one I had, these are in no order. Mac, oh, hold well on. Before we, uh, I kind of want you to order. Like at least you should know your top three. Nah, because I listened to all of these like multiple times. So yeah, there's really no top for me because I really enjoyed all these albums. That was the hardest part for me. Yeah. Um, before I get into my list, we gotta do some housekeeping. Um, build bars. You get twenty percent off your first order. Promo code Pub Sports. Builtbars.com. Check it out. I think these are it right here. Oh, snap. Look, I didn't even look. see those. I'm glad yeah. I picked that one. Stepped up. <laughs> I'm reading and everything. I've been practicing. 2021. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, we're reading everything. <laughs> All right. So anyway, getting into my my list. So Mac Miller Circles, that one was on there. Nice. That album is so sad to me. I still can't like get over that he died. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So that one's definitely on there. Brent Fayez, Fayez, yeah. Um, F the world. So I went back to all these albums before we did our podcast just to like see what the feelings were. Yep. Definitely remember all of them. So Brent Fayez, uh, F the world. That one was dope. It's like a mix of R and B and rap. Mm-hmm. No, I think it's more R and B. But he's like R and trap. But it's not like 100 percent R and B. Yeah. And then uh, Royce the Five Nine. I'm surprised you didn't put this one on yours. The allegory. That one came out the same week as Benny the Butcher. I, yeah. And and the thing I think what... what no, that, Black Thought did. I think oh, it Black was, Thought. It came out the same week as either Benny the Butcher or yeah. Conway. They okay, both it was got probably Conway. Week, and I think that that week, it wasn't like the clear winner. Okay. So that's why in my head, well, if it wasn't the clear winner that week, yeah. it just didn't do it. Yeah. Royce the Five Nine. after listening to the allegory, I listened to his whole like catalog on Apple Music at the gym. He's a rapper, rapper. Yeah. Does he's, that include his slaughterhouse? No. Uh, so <laughs> I, don't say whole catalog. His individual catalog. I tried listening to him and fit in um Eminem. I just gotta listen to him by himself. <laughs> I see why him and Eminem did a project together though. I he's say, I hope we don't say Eminem. Okay. He's a rapper rapper. And then uh Janae Aiko, uh yeah. Chalombo. That is like a LSD album, and it's like super R and B. So yeah, it, it was is. good. It was just it was yeah, that album, it was good. It was just lyrically kind of not R and B lyric. It was weird. Yeah. She she's yeah, she's like a female future. Yeah. She knows what she's, she's doing. Very yeah. And then I had the weekend after hours. That one I didn't like because of the direction he went in, mm-hmm. but I liked it because of like how much he put into it. You can tell he took his time with this album. Oh, yeah. And that definitely should have been album of the year on that little list or yeah, it should have been album of the year. That one also improved it with the more plays. Yeah. Yeah. Great album. Uh Logic, no pressure. Yeah. This is one of his what top three albums, I would say. You got under pressure, no pressure, the incredible true story. Those are my top three. The, for that one. Yeah, it's gonna be under pressure, incredible, and then no pressure. That's the yeah. order. Take your pick. I, I can't argue. That They're was, all great. Those that was a good great. project. And I loved how it was like a callback to the original. And this is supposed to be his last album. So that was dope. Was Under Pressure his first like mainstream first album? Studio album? So that was dope. And it also had like <clears throat> that that meaning to it with the being <clears throat> no pressure in the title. Um, and That's then I for a circle. Yeah. These, this was a good. That was a good project. Uh, Big Sean, Detroit 2. Mm-hmm. I liked it. I put it on there because it's Big Sean. I definitely wouldn't say it's his best project yet Bro, because like, I'm still looking for a classic. I, I thought that too. I'm like, and I listened to it again. I listened to it like two, three times yeah. again after when I was doing this three weeks ago because we talked about doing our list three yeah. weeks ago. Yeah, so we definitely had me. time. The replay wasn't there. It is for me. Like Big Sean the is the whole album. Replay? Yeah, he's in his own ca- like his own league. Like Drake has this thing. Kendrick and Big Sean. I no longer put J. Cole in his own thing. Like I was telling y'all the other day, I just don't feel like J. Cole is up there anymore. Big Sean, he has yeah. that that sound and that vibe that he's he just makes you want to be successful, you know? Yeah. So I put him up there. And then I had Trey Songs Back Home. That's an RB RB album. Like Janae Aiko is good, but Trey Songs definitely that's a real RB album out of all the RB albums that dropped, in my opinion. Um, and then Benny the Butcher. Like, if you want to get a misdemeanor or a felony, this is the album to play. That one was definitely up there for me, too. Dude, Burn and Proof was yeah. good. I listened to that one before um, Black Thought. I don't I don't understand how you would, like, give Benny the Butcher, like, the spin if, if you liked it that much. Yeah. Like, Freddie Gibbs, you would like. I never listened to Freddie Gibbs. Like, I'm not comparing. I'm just saying that yeah. they're both the... I think they both... They're the same vibe. Okay. Like criminal crime vibe <laughs> yeah but burger the proof was very good i've never listened to any of his other projects and i was surprised at how good and how much i liked it which is different um and then black thought streams of thought volume three Cain and abel mm-hmm. long ass title for a reason that was a great album i don't know why you didn't put that one on there i don't know it just didn't make it how many griselda artists was on your list one one benny but i have all the other ones 
in here that I reviewed. You didn't put West Side on there. I don't like I him. Put, I didn't I, listen to him like that though. That's that was my next my next question for you. What are some albums that were close to it? To Black Thought or like no, close to making your list. Oh, the only ones that I can think of that I actually put, I put Barely Beat, uh Jaden, Cool Tape Volume Three. Everything else, eh, it was good, but if it wasn't like super reputable. One album that didn't make the cut for me and it surprised myself, Run the Jewels for. Yeah, that one I didn't listen to as much, so that was definitely not hard. That one surprised me, Conway, um, Don Tolliver, because that was a really good album. That dropped this year? Yes, that I was forgot a really about good that. album. That was a great album. I wouldn't put it in the top 10 because some of the songs sound like he used them before. So, nah. I think he used it with Travis Scott or somebody's songs. Mm. So, yeah, you don't get credit for that. On, on here, I have Kiana, Run the Jewels for. I don't know who Kiana is. Um, Conway. Uh, Omar Apollo, Black Thought. Omar those Apollo are, was good, but I didn't listen to it enough. Those are the ones that I put in here that were like, that I had to review a couple weeks ago when I did all this. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's probably this. Yeah, that's a legit top 10. Here's two. I, I can list all these albums again. Like, yeah. pretty I much. Did. When free. I reviewed it, I did. Pretty much skip free. Yeah, Mac I can Miller, listen to all of them. Mac Miller would probably be the hardest album to listen to because he died. I'm like that with XXX as well. Yeah. Um, I think it was either 21 or the one with the question mark. Those two are hard to listen to because, yeah. you know, he like put a lot into them. Mac Miller's is like so like the mode again. Like it, it doesn't help like the content he has. And, yeah. And it's just like, damn, man, he rapped about it. And yeah. it's just like, it's, bro, it like, sounds like a good buy album. And I don't like, like that. It reminds me of a of Juice World. Like I forgot his last album, though. He dropped <clears throat> last year, too. I'm surprised he wasn't on, on your. Was uh, it? I think it was, because he it? he had an accolade. I think he dropped something and he was like was number it? one yeah. or something like that. But um, some of some of the songs in Juice World, like he talked about it, and like I'm like, it's just crazy. Like, yeah. and my my thought was, how much of the album was complete? Like, are were these songs that wanted on the album, or it's just of what happened? Like, they constructed to be on the album. Yeah. And the way it took so long to put it out, it definitely made me think like these are songs that were supposed to be on the album or something like that, that they were just yeah. critiquing or yeah. finishing. Because we have a lot more backstory to Circles than we do Juice Worlds. I forgot his album name. Yeah. Um, but because there was, this was supposed to be like a follow up to Swimming yeah. and all that. So, um, and I heard yeah. that he's supposed to drop, they're supposed to drop another album for Mac Miller. I want to say I heard that. Yeah. I, I really, really hope that it was an album that he worked on and not like an album they put together because Mac Miller was one of you. I don't think you can find a Mac Miller album that sounds like it was thrown together. Mm -hmm. All of his are, even though none of the albums, like not all of them were amazing to me. Yeah. None of them sounded like he just threw together and he released them. They were all consistent as in the flow of it and the way it was constructed. So to me, that's gonna ruin it if they put something together. Yeah, and they're like, "Oh, this is a, a post around my album, whatever." Yeah, but yeah, and then um, Pop Smokes. You did? Did you the Woo? Mickey yeah, Mickey that was a good album, but I didn't listen to it enough for it to be my top ten. And then I only listened to like maybe three songs on there. Most of them were skips for me because it just I just didn't like it. It was a good album, but Meet the Woo was way better for me. Um, was that the one? Maybe I did listen. Meet the that's one with the one guy who sings, right? With the eyes. I forgot his name. And then Meet the Two. That was the one. That was the. Is that the one with Fifty Cent? That was the one. Well, I remember, but that was the one that Virgil did the cover, and everyone bashed him, so they changed it to. The yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. I didn't like. I don't think I liked that album. I don't remember. Part one to me is like what was better. Okay, but yeah. So yeah, those are my top ten. I'm looking forward to a top 10 for 2021. It's going to be a good year. I, I kind of wanted like a, at least one decent drop to like on Friday. Like, Drake was supposed to drop, but he changed <clears throat> his mind. Was he? Yeah. I, I read, I read up on it there. He was planning to drop, but he got injured. I guess he's, he's like a professional. Injured, yeah. Happened? I'm like, it's what? what? I, it's COVID bro. In like, the studio? Yeah. Some injured? shit. And then he had to change the date on him. I don't understand. But yeah, but why did it change the date? Does he like 
right? He can't do a rollout because he's COVID. You think he's like trying to do for him a, a concert or something? For I don't him, a rollout is a post. Yeah, it's it doesn't make have no to sense. do much besides post out now. It made no sense. But, but yeah, what was his injury? I don't remember. I didn't look that deep into it. I know Odell said it was coming. <laughs> Odell Beckham uh, said it was coming the first, but then he got injured, so he delayed it. <laughs> I don't remember what don't what he injured. It was probably a leg strainer. Probably popped his Achilles on the court. <laughs> but yeah, so I think that's gonna be a good album. Um, I don't really know what else is dropping this year off the top of my head. Mm, I don't know either. I haven't heard. Maybe J Cole. Kendrick or J Cole's talked about al- um songs. Okay, I, I don't care. He needs to lead, lead up to a damn album. Yeah, maybe Kendrick drops this year. I don't uh, know. That can be a maybe every year, bro. Like, if Kendrick drops, he has a run at like having the best album of the year. I'm calling it now, even if Drake drops. And those are like, well, because I mean that's a safe answer. Because instead of running, that doesn't mean you're saying he's the best. I'm saying he might he might drop. I'm only giving two people album of the year. Who's gonna get it? We don't know. If Jayco drops, he's automatically in the running for me. If SZA drops, that's gonna be a good album. Yeah. Um, Solange, if she drops, maybe it'll be a good album. There's a lot of people, but you know who ain't dropping? Tiana Taylor. She says she's retiring. So yeah. Okay. About that, I am not a fan for the reason she's retiring. Because they're not putting out her album. That's not what she said. She's like, what she said, like the what was it called? It wasn't the promotion, like the reception of the fans. Like she felt like more people should listen to her and all that. Did she say that she posted her stats and she's like, that's that's all I got. I'm gonna look it up. I look thought it, it was up. because she didn't like the label that nah, was she, managing her. She posted her like I don't know how many million. She's like, that's all the listens I got or something like that. It's I, on. I yeah, find it. <laughs> all right, we we can circle back. Yeah, I could have swore it was because she had poor management from the label, the label being Kanye, and Kanye was like, nah, I'm not doing my job, or something like that. I'm pretty like sure that. she talked about, like, the amount of, like, streams and listens and all that, too. Man, I hate this. She, she posted the stats. Like, she posted the stats for a reason. I'm retiring this chapter of my life with the comfort that I can depart with peace of mind, seeing that all the hard work and passion put in was indeed loved and supported somewhere in the world somewhere i don't even know what that means that I means she wanted more love from the fans that just means that her label wasn't handling where does it say right. label somewhere that could be the fans i don't know they should have a screenshot of what she posted and i hate like ads like no, get I, out I, the way i hate these next gen ads where like they scroll with they you. cover the whole page like, they scroll cool. with you i'm like damn yeah anyway i don't know she says she retired hopefully she comes yeah, back if it's because of what i took it i'm not a fan of that because if she loves music that much she She's doing it for me. It's paying her money. Yeah. Like, like she ain't doing it for free. She right. might not be up there with the Drake on revenue, but she's she's not losing money. Yeah. But yeah, if she um unretires, I'll be looking forward to that album. I mean, everyone retires in the music industry, then yeah. they retires and yeah. all right. Uh switching to sports. Um, so Gordon Hayward. Um, initially at the time of this <laughs> writing had broken or fractured his finger and was out for two games um, or a couple of games. Now that he's back, do you think the Hornets are a good investment or have made a good investment in him or how far do you think they're going to go? As of now? Yes. I think it's a good investment. Okay. I, I, they're still missing. He, he's not a superstar to carry them to, yeah. uh, you know, a championship whatsoever, but I think it's a good investment. And I feel like, um, this year with 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 uh, Lamella Ball, that once he gets his groove, because he started off really bad, like his first couple of games were bad. Lamella, uh, yeah, okay. Um, his last game he dropped 22, 23, something. Yeah, like I that. saw that. Uh, so as soon as he finds his shot a little more, um, I think he'll be he's gonna be more consistent. Not in the twenties, but I want him inconsistent in like the 15s, 16s, and kind of. You know, grow at it yeah. because he's he's not gonna be he's not gonna be the point where you want thirty because he he should average he, he should average a double double when it comes to assist. Yeah. Me. Uh, <clears throat> but I think this sets him up to build to allow him to attract a good like solid mid tier person for next year that can really help him playoff team and build like that. Yeah, I also saw that um, Levar was saying that expect to see the hornets and the lakers in the finals <laughs> i'm like bro 
he's a proud parent for real. Yeah. I don't know why people hate on him. Like that's wild. He's just he's he's all those um, soccer dad and soccer mom just yeah. on a national level. Yeah. I don't know if people just I don't think they hate him anymore. I just think there's people that are like, you're not being Did sens- you see what you're he not said about sense uh, ball on the bench. Uh some like I th- I read it. Well, I saw the, the title, but I didn't really read into it. He's like, You want your he something about your attraction why you want why is your attraction on the bench he's not your or something like that something about like he's supposed to be your first pick but you don't put your first pick on the bench or some shit like that i don't know like didn't he go scoreless his first game he did but i mean it's his first game yeah you can now remember the a big difference now rosier is on the team right yeah now i think this is a big difference in my eyes my opinion that these draft picks had no summer league okay they all play the summer league and i think that kind of like shakes off some stuff and then gets them back in the groove and it gets them playing with people the top tier of people yeah preseason though the summer league's different like it's a whole tournament feel and but you're and, not really playing like the top talent anyway but in normally league. they have summer league mm-hmm. and they have preseason and this preseason was cut short was it like five days or something? It was cut short. So uh, it's definitely a lot less time. Yeah. You know? So, um, yeah, I, I think Summer League is really good, like, for, for these draft picks. Um, I think Summer League is just gives them time to get into the, uh, you know, the field of the NBA game because you don't have no top-tier, active top-tier talent. Yeah. You have the rookies, the people trying to get a contract, and normally you have some veterans at play. Yeah. I don't know, but I think he'll he'll come into his own. I still don't think he'll be better. Well, I think he's gonna be on the same level of Lonzo. I don't think he's gonna be like head and shoulders a better better than him. They're both pl- uh, point guards. It look like so. I don't know. It don't look like he's like wowing me. Still, man, make ups to uh Bob, man. Two, you know, two sons in the NBA. He had three for a day. He had three. He was at a hundred percent. That was the quickest kind of. <laughs> So, I was reading that the type of contract that um, Leangelo did, yeah, it if they cut him before a certain date, which they did, yeah, they don't have to pay him. No, he's guaranteed a spot on the G League team. If they cut him, he's guaranteed. On if they the G if they cut him a spot before a certain date, which they did, that he he's guaranteed a spot on their G League team. So now. he is going to be on their G League. Yeah, wasn't he already on the G League? And he got cut, but not not their team. Like he was like last was year. Was it the Warriors were... or something? I want to say it was the Warriors. Was I forgot what G League he was on. Yeah, but he's gonna be on their G League team because he got cut before a certain date. Oh, uh, but yeah, that's cool. I guess. Hope he gets some time to develop. I mean, uh, he he really he's not a point guard. I don't think he's too big. No, nah. was he I, shooting I guard? I don't, I don't think he has the athleticism like. For that, and the and the thing that sucks is that I think he has the best shot out of the three. Yeah, he definitely has the best shot, but he just doesn't have that that athleticism. He's 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 heavier than the two. Yeah, he's not as tall as the two. Yeah, and maybe that's why he has the best shot because he worked on that. Yeah, he's like, damn, I need a, I need a shot. He's something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah, um, best luck to him. We'll see you in the future, I guess. Yeah, and then um, for NBA predictions. Who do you have you made your prediction for who do you think will be, let's say, do you want to set it in stone or do you want to reserve the right to change it? Like when just don't say shit. Okay, because so you're not like, pick. like I don't think you're understanding the difference between picking like from a like just like what I think based on talent. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean I'm cheering for them to win the title. No, that's what I'm talking about. So I think without doubt, Lakers are gonna win it again. Okay, they're just too good of a team. Like they're deep. So like, are you the roster? Are you picking the Lakers? Yeah, I'm picking them. Okay, yeah. welcome, welcome but to the club. I I'm not gonna follow them. Like, of course, I know what it means. I don't care. I'm not the I, other guy. Now I hope I'm wrong. You're Mavs, and the Mavs win. You're a Mavs fan. Yeah, you're like, picking a team by any means. I hope by the end of the season you're here saying your pick was wrong and the Mavs won. Yeah, that I would cool. love that. But uh, I, I just I don't know. Like the Mavs have been inconsistent, man. Like. We won last night, but we couldn't shoot the ball. We won 
we we only won because the other the other team Miami couldn't they shot worse they had like a fifteen miss streak in a row yeah like they only it was like ninety eight to eighty something when's the last time you see that in NBA like yeah but who do you think is getting out of the East the Nets you got the Nets I don't believe in the Nets I think they're top heavy I think that's I mean who's gonna beat them in the East I've been thinking about it it's been between the Celtics and the seventy sixers ah I'm still debating. I don't think I've made a pick yet. I might go Celtics because I think 76ers might fall apart. But, yeah, I, I think I'm going to go. That's hard. I don't see 76ers doing it. That's what I'm saying. Like, <clears throat> they got a new coach, so that might help. I'm going to go I'm gonna mm-hmm. go Celtics. Hey, shout out to Seth Curry, man. Like, you balled with us, but you're, but you're balling right now for 76ers. Yeah. I don't know if you needed your – uh, your father in law, <laughs> like, like, um, thanks, dad. <laughs> like, you know, like, I, I don't know what, what you needed, but uh, yeah, he's 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 being more consistent. It's still early in the year, but he's being more consistent. Yeah, so I'm gonna go Celtics. I'm putting it out there. Celtics, I think you're gonna get out of the Man, East. Tatum just gets better by the year, bro. Jalen Brown's dope too. Yeah, they're ballers, so yeah, I'm gonna go Celtics. I feel comfortable. Um, let me see what else. Oh, MVP, who do you think is gonna win? MVP. Um, I'm going to say Luca. I picked Luca as well, so I can't change it, but it's not looking. It's nah, There's no like breakout rookie or MVPs no. right now, anyway. So he still has a chance. Again, um, I from what I saw Luca the last couple of years, he really seems like that person that needs to get in the flow. Yeah. He's not like the like LeBron James were off six months and done. Yeah. Like last season, that preseason, he really struggled and he kind of found his groove again. This season with less practice and less practice with the team in the off season and such a short off season, I just don't think he's finding his groove as much. And I feel that once KP comes back, which is supposed to be like this week or something. Yeah. Um, it's going to allow Luca to kind of get in his flow more and it's going to open up like a lot. Okay. So um, we're three and two right now, I think, or yeah, we're three and two. So um, we'll see. Uh, I I really need KP back because I think KP back is going to help Luca a lot. Yeah. Okay. And then who do you have rookie of the year? Mm, man, I can't change my pig, but I'm going to go with, with you the better ball. Not, you, who? Ball. Who yeah. are you gonna? Who are you thinking? No, nah, I'm gonna go ball. Who are you gonna say? Yeah, Lamelo Ball. No Before one. Before that, he's like, I can't no change one. my pick. No one. Okay, who do you think is gonna be a wild horse? That way we can see. Um, you better not go. Um, to, you better not go to New York. Uh, Patrick. Uh, oh, what's okay. His name? Uh, I didn't see that. Uh, what's his name? Patrick Ewing. <laughs> <laughs> I got Obi Toppin for a rookie of the year. Who's yeah. playing for? Oh, you talking about Golden State? No, nah, what's the name? Patrick Robinson. Hold on. Golden no, State. I, dudes. Saw, I was looking at stuff. Um, you know, shout out NBA man. I got the league pass. That's dope. Yeah, that's great. We're flex. Let's see. I got some people on my field. Who was your? Who's your dark horse? Well, my pick is Obi Toppin. Patrick Williams off the Bulls. Okay, I haven't followed him. He was drafted number four. Mm. Higher than to, uh, and no one had the number one or number two pick between us. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, why doesn't it look like he was struggling at the Warriors for the Warriors? I somebody was saying he's like a new KD. That's what I heard. He's, I haven't, he I haven't some, watched him. He he's had some struggles. Well, like all the rookies have, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I can't say anything. Balls. So yeah, to, so. it's normal, I guess. But yeah, so I got Obi. We'll see. I think. That's the only thing we disagreed on. Well, in the East. But, yeah, we'll see what happens. That's cool. I got you on wax. Can't change your pick now, bucko. Who do you think is going to be the most improved player of the year? Most improved? Yeah. Uh, KD. He's coming off zero points last year. So, I think he's going to be most improved. Most. But they're going to go off the year he played, the last year he played. Um. I don't know. So when you think most improved, do you, I don't know. May, 
Jalen Brown, maybe? Jalen Brown? Maybe. Who had a bad year last year? Ben Simmons? I'm gonna if go he gets with, a shot. I'm going to go with uh, Malcolm Brogdon off of uh, the Pacers. Okay. He's going to be my most improved. Okay. I'm going to go Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown. Him or like Dylan Brooks. Okay. How do you feel about Harden? Do you think he's going to get traded? It's looking like they're going to keep him. Yeah, it's looking like he's going to keep him. Like the, the, the whispers kind of went down a little he's bit. He's balling. Like he's balling off wing stop. That's wild. Bro. <laughs> like nobody's built like that. Bro, he's like, <laughs> bro, when, when I saw him in the Lovers game, like his picture went around everywhere. I was all like, yeah. Damn, like he didn't expect to play. No. Like, no. He's like, our off season isn't it normally like four months? Like, like was <laughs> he? It's crazy. Nobody talks about his conditioning. Like, ever since he got blocked by Manu that one game, I was that the semifinals or whatever. Like, he's been hooping and he hasn't been injured. Like, he don't look like he's getting tired, and he's not built for NBA right now. That's wild. You, but. <clears throat> His game doesn't need like a fast like. Bro, he's crossing people up and going to the hoop. You gotta have hops for that. You gotta have little bunnies. Little bunnies, yeah. Like, but but he he ain't doing coast to coast a lot. I really don't think he has. He has a three shot, so yeah. he his game is impeccable. I must say, they might get to the playoffs. I think they're going to playoffs. So speaking of Houston and all that, John Wall came back. He's yeah, balling and, and cousins. Yeah. Bruh. Big boogie. But talking about the trade, John Wall and all that. Yeah. What's up with like Russell Russell? They're owing five. They're still figuring stuff out. What are, this dude's he's had a triple double in every game and it still ain't doing it's it. It's not his fault then. Bro, like, like I, what's going on? If I get a triple double, we not pointing the fingers at me. Like, mm. I don't know. So um taking like triple doubles. Stats. Maybe they had the hardest schedule. Why <laughs> they they lost to the Bulls? I don't think so. Um, man, why why are people cl- not clowning but like discrediting like LeBron thousand game streak of ten points or more? I don't know. That's the more I think about it, the harder that has to be. It is, and because the reason I thought about it too is like turning back to Luca is because I think Harden's on the second. I mean, Harden Kawhi's on the second longest streak, like a hundred and twenty six, one hundred and thirty six. Yeah. Luca's on a streak. Last game gave him a hundred straight games of twenty points or more. Okay, and I think Harden's up there with like forty point streaks. I think I want to say he's like number one, mm. or he's like top but three. A thousand games, like people yeah. act like like ten points in the in this era NBA is nothing, but to do it for a thousand, a thousand games, games in a row, that means like you couldn't have an off night. You you couldn't like I don't even want to say off night because you can have an off night and still have ten points, but this. Look at everyone else that's close to him. No one's close to him. Yeah, and there was um, games where AD had like nine points. Yeah. So, yeah, that's crazy. Especially someone like LeBron where he can easily have a game where he just facilitates. He doesn't need to worry about scoring. Yeah. If they're winning, what's the point? Like, he just facilitates. And it's consecutive, too, that they're talking yeah. about. So that means 1,000 10-point games bro, I saw some in a row. comments, bro. I'm like, y'all dumb. It's yeah. like... Well, why are they only counting athlete games? They're like, do you want to count when he's hurt? Like he's not playing. Like, yeah, y'all just find ways to discredit. Yeah. It's just man. haters. There's just haters. I-, I deal with haters on a nightly basis in chat oh, yeah. at two a.m. sometimes. But yeah, shout out to Jeremy. Um, but like low key, like the group chat's dope. Yeah, but the best thing I did is I have that on permanent view. <laughs> I do. So like, like when I. Because I'm not gonna lie, like when you see that pop up, you're like, damn, I want to see what's up. Yeah, let me let me see who's going yeah. at who. Yeah. So like when I pop in, it's like I pop in because I want to. Let yeah. me see what's going on, and I get when it's still turned on to where I get the notification yeah. if you if you at me. But so now when I get in there, I'm like, I want to be in there not yeah. because oh I, I see the unread shit. Let me see what's yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. But yeah, it, it definitely get live in there ever since yeah. the music group is timed down. But yeah. Got strict, bro. Like, yeah, I had to get yeah. out of there. I don't do rules. Um, do you think Rockets are getting to the playoffs at this point? I say yes. Um, because Warriors look worse than I thought they would. 
Yeah, they definitely exposed. Has Draymond came back yet? He gone. I don't know. What's wrong with him? With Draymond, I don't. I don't even know what's wrong with him. his mouth. Hurt? <laughs> I, I don't know. Like I, I never thought about what injury he's having right now. Like, why isn't he playing? That's <clears throat> that's kind of soft. It was. It was. It's interesting that some of the NBA players are like coming to Curry's defense. Like, no, it's just Curry's not finding those open shots, and it's like. That's because they only the teams they, they only can, got one person to like defend like, or play for. It's like they can afford to double team you. Yeah, they don't got clay. They don't got K- yeah. Like they they can afford it. Like yeah. All right, let's leave, let's leave Wiseman open. Y'all know what we're doing. <laughs> let's let's get him. <laughs> Do you think with him having such disadvantage of help, he can make a run for MVP? No. Because because it, because they're not gonna get to the playoffs. It's not that. It's not the playoffs. For me, it's not about the playoffs. It's just the stats have it back you up, and he's been missing shots too. So yeah. okay. But yeah, so that's a good talk. Oh, before we wrap up, uh, Bitcoin was it thirty two thousand? Well, I when it hit twenty, I told you in the chat by my birthday, which is May ten. I what? expected to be thirty thousand. I told you that. I, I told you thirty by April. Yeah, I told you thirty by that um, because it had a like most like most stocks or cryptos, it hits the resistance. It, yeah. it hits the flat, then it levels out, and then it does a day blah blah. Yeah, I didn't know it was gonna do it this quickly. I don't think it corrected at all yet. It hasn't yeah. corrected. No, it's going up. Like there, there is no resistance right now. Like it's gonna, it's been dipping and doing that, man. Like and the good thing is a lot of these um cryptocurrencies are benefiting like altcoins yeah yeah litecoin is going up like what was it it's been having like daily gains of 10 15 percent which is dollars but think yeah. about when you have a couple thousand in there per share like it's, it's just going up like i have fractions of bitcoin i ain't dropping 25k yeah. when or tank, even, dropping a house like, even even like no lie like even when i got in you know like it, it was like the 15 like yeah. i have 15k to drop on it yeah but like the return on it's also like quadruple of when i got in yeah so like it's crazy what it is man like and it's going to be a very interesting year with cryptocurrency because this is i feel like this is a year the u.s is going to attack it and i don't mean attack it as in to destroy it they're going to attack to try to regulate some house because it's going to be like y'all fools are making money we want our taxes on that shit yeah they're already doing it they're trying to regulate it in some way, the, even though it's XRP. like XRP, yeah, even though it's decentralized, so they're yeah. it's harder to figure out how to control it. But yeah, they're definitely trying to do it. Yeah. Um, because damn, do they tax on stocks, bro? Like thirty percent of yeah. profit. And with it being crypto, it's it's if you think about it, it's really harder to trace than stocks because you can have wallets like cryptocurrency wallets yeah. that aren't attached to banks yeah. or they don't that don't ask for your um, social. So yeah. there's no way to tell how much it is. you got. You're, you're so, supposed to be the good American. In yeah, <laughs> like it's wild. But yeah, this is definitely going to be the year that I think crypto really gets understood by like regular people because banks are starting to put more, more money into it and everything. And yeah. then the news, they're not even talking about it yet. And Bitcoin's at like 33,000. Yep. So I think once that becomes like a trend again, it's going to like pump to like 50K. But like like in anything, like do your research because like I'm not a pro at it whatsoever, but I have the base knowledge of it. Yeah. But I see people in my timeline drop blah 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 into it. Let me see what happens. Yeah. And it's like they they're like, Oh, I down I downloaded this, but I can't even buy it. Like I'm like they're they're it's just like yeah. I don't know, I feel like a lot of people are jumping into it. Yeah. So the way that I do it how i figure out which coins that i have i look at it as what's the purpose of the coin because a lot of the coins that are out there they're just just made like for me xrp is a utility it's Mm -hmm. more of like transactions it speeds up the fact that you're able to do peer-to-peer like transactions so that's that was the purpose for it yeah um i got that one i got zilliqa i got v chain and i think i got xl i got stellar still yeah um, I don't have XRP anymore because of that SEC thing. Mm-hmm. Um, once we figure out if it's going to be a currency or a securities or not, that'll make my decision if I'm going to get back into it. 
but yeah definitely do your research that was a hard drop man yeah i got out <laughs> like that was a it dropped Ooh, it dropped i i i didn't i didn't pull out yet because it it dropped to a point where there's no point to to take out because I, let me re- recruit something and it's yeah. going up and like for me when i got out i didn't like cash it out i put it into another coin that was going up so yeah. it's not like i lost money on it yeah. so that's what i'm saying you like, lost the, the the virtual gain or loss of it yeah i i think i still got gains because i put it in a currency that amount that's going up so, you know yeah. if that makes sense <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, I would definitely say do your research and make sure it's a utility coin versus just something that's popular. I mean, that's preference. That's what I would say, yeah. yeah that's preference. Like, there's people that are investing in a, a coin that has a dog on it. But, yeah. you know, it's up to you. Gains are gains, bro. I mean, it's like the built bars. Gains are gains. I mean, you want a pump or a long stream? It's up to you. <laughs> it's quick. Yeah, you get it out. We'll see, man. But this is the year that I've. For the show, I think um, we're gonna bring more into this, like yeah, stocks and whatnot. Because I don't know, I know what stocks I mean. You kind of go back and forth, as in you're not the biggest fan of stocks. I don't really have, I don't have any stocks. Mm-hmm. It's not that I'm a fan of it. It's just no, I'm not. I'm just not into it. It just mm-hmm. doesn't like and, and, fancy me. And I still don't understand that, just because it's is very similar to crypto. Like, yeah. like the investing, like there isn't really much difference. Like you look for this. now. I know crypto is the charts the statistics behind stocks and how to track the way they go mm-hmm. is not a hundred percent accurate when it comes to crypto right just because of, it's so new and so yeah and also the trading hours like it's just like it's sunday and i was trading today yeah like i bought i bought more watching something go up and it's, stuff like it's that. it's a lot more decentralized you can't really yeah. control it as yeah. much you can still like but kind of do but it but the, not really the what's it called the 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 verbiage what you look for the base of it's still there so yeah i feel like stocks isn't much different than crypto yeah yeah it's definitely pretty similar what coins do you have when it comes to crypto i have well bit xrp still and then dot and then dog dogecoin yeah dogecoin i like it man (laughs) so everybody's telling me about dogecoin so now i feel good on this because today it 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 tripled what i invested on it yeah uh, i'm still holding because i feel like on monday um when you have more investors you're still gonna they're still gonna pump but i told you about this two three days ago mm-hmm. i'm like bro go in because when i told you it was that i don't even know like what it was it was a point zero 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 three and it went up yeah. to one cent so you quadrupled your investment on that i can't fomo mm-hmm. I, I can't do it so I told you about before, man. I heard the whispers on it in, yeah. in these forums, in these chats. I mean, like I heard the whispers on it. And it's right now, 2021 is a good start on it. Yeah. Like it's still up. And so if it goes to that cent and, and builds the resistance at a cent, bro, yeah. money. Yeah. So I've heard. <laughs> but yeah, um, definitely not investing in Dogecoin. But yeah, a lot of people are. I keep yeah. hearing about it. But yeah. Anyway, before we wrap up. Oh, what? Do you do you have like a lot of stocks? I think you do, right? You're like over five. Yeah, I have over five stocks. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna get into it then. That's a lot of stocks. What do you mean? I was gonna say like what stocks do you have, but that's that's too many. Stocks. My my main movers, I well my long term ones are um Sea World, Gap. No lie, I I invested because of Kanye. Yeah, and it's and it's up twenty five percent since my investment from Gap. Okay. So Sea World, MGM, the casino. Yeah, or MGM, the MGMs. No, the the, the casino. casino. Okay, and then um, six flags. The no, nah, I didn't do this six flags, and then um, American Airlines. Okay, and that's then, gonna bounce. And then Dave and Buster's. Okay, the because all those like for what I did this year is, I looked at their. Uh, <clears throat> so this was back in like March, April. I looked at their. Did the research on like their 52 week high and all that. Uh, all of them dropped by probably 80% because of you know what happened. And I put all of them in. So uh proud of myself, man. I was talking to my wife about it. Like I had a 70% increase, 70, 70% return on my investments this year and one 2020. And yeah, I looked to build on that. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, this is dope. Well, before we wrap up, where can people check us check us out at Roy for uh 2021? 
Matt, Apple, Spotify, if you follow us, if you listen to us on there, appreciate it. Make sure you put the notification so you hear us when we drop that. If you're on YouTube, still notification bell, but comment. Um, let us know what you think. Uh, get involved. We're here. Yeah. And no matter where you're listening, uh, we're turning up the mic. Appreciate y'all listening. Stick, rap,